Hi there, my name is Rob Nertney and I'm part of the CUDA management team here at NVIDIA. Today I want to take a few moments to talk about the various aspects of CUDA compatibility, what it means and how it can help you as a developer utilize NVIDIA solutions more efficiently. Now the agenda is short and sweet. First, we'll go over the CUDA Toolkit, often abbreviated CTK, what it means and some of the major parts of it that are specific to compatibility. Next, we'll talk about backwards compatibility, which is quite simply bringing old applications onto newer hardware. Follow that with details on a flexible compatibility, which often helps on systems where you as a developer might not be able to count on a specific driver or toolkit being installed. Finally, we'll go over forward compatibility, which is using newer toolkits on older drivers. Now, CUDA can fundamentally be broken down into two main parts, the toolkit and the driver. Now, the toolkit is a package of utilities, compilers, and libraries, all of which enable developers to access this underlying GPU hardware. It's versioned in an increment by one major version, minor version, and optionally an update or patch rate number. Now, the driver is actually two parts. It has a user mode driver, UMD, and a kernel mode driver, KMD. The UMD provides developers with a set of APIs to access the underlying hardware while the KMD handles all the data transfer, the housekeeping, etc. The KMD is actually a standard display driver that's used across all of NVIDIA GPUs, and as such is versioned separately in an increment by five, major, minor, and patch format. If we dive deeper into the driver itself, it actually comes in three flavors, new feature branches, production branches, and long-term support branches. While all three are tested equally rigorously, they have different life cycles. Once an NFB is released, it won't be updated. It's really meant for users who want cutting edge features, maybe new tools or bug fixes that were released before the next production or LTS branch. Now, the production and LTS branches will receive updates for one and three years respectively. Updates are released quarterly and will bump the minor version as well. If we zoom in on current drivers supported as of today, this video, you can see the current life cycle remaining on the drivers still in support. Now, we need to look at the toolkit itself. The toolkit will release both minor versions with revisions with a specific version of the driver. There's a cadence of approximately 30 days or a month between CTK releases. You'll see while normally minor versions of the toolkit are released independently of each other, developer demand may guide us to actually have parallel minor releases of a major version at once. Now, with an underlying understanding of the separation between the driver and the toolkit under our belts, let's dig into the meat of the topic. How are these parts compatible with each other? Do I need to recompile my application every time there's a new driver or a new toolkit? What if I'm developing on an older system? Not to worry, we have a few features that'll help you out. Let's start with backwards compatibility. This is arguably the easiest form of compatibility. It's where any application you wrote in the past will continue to execute on drivers of today, even from as far back as CUDA 3.0. Now, there are some considerations, of course. First, we don't include every past version of every library you might have linked to in the past. So make sure that you statically linked your application to those required libraries beforehand. Other than that, you can rest easy knowing that your application will run on any current driver of our current GPU. Now this also applies only to pre-compiled binaries. Source code from the past may have API changes that would require you to modify your code to call into the drivers of today. The next compatibility, is something we call minor version compatibility. You may have seen it online referenced as enhanced compatibility. This enables you to continue development on whatever version of the CTK you may have been using and call into drivers as long as the system you debug or deploy the CTK on is within a single major version. For example, you can continue working on 11.4 and can count on your application compiling against and running on a system with 11.7 and vice versa. Now, again, there are some considerations to take into account. First, you should take care to write your code such that you don't accidentally call a new API that might not be available on an older CTK or driver. Second, some of the libraries we provide have codependencies. Mixing kubloss and kudnn, for example, might lead to unintended side effects. And finally, if you use PTX JIT compiling, just-in-time compiling of PTX code, it won't work on minor version compatibility without a statically linked PTX JIT compiler, which we do provide you, but it won't work with minor version compatibility because it's really closely tied to the exact driver version. With the rate at which infrastructure continues to scale out into the thousands to millions of systems, it's becoming more common 
for infrastructure teams to be kind of reluctant to update drivers on every single node every single time that there's a driver released. However, software complexity, new features, new faster, better libraries continue to improve just as quickly. Now, forward compatibility is designed with this use case specifically in mind. We at NVIDIA have committed to maintaining compatibility between the UMD user mode driver and the kernel mode driver across versions of the drivers for the life cycle of that driver. This allows you as a developer to utilize the latest features, tools, libraries, and ACUDA toolkit while still calling into an older kernel mode driver. Now, this requires a separate package, which is available online and in, it's in all the major software repositories on Linux. This package sits alongside the existing user mode driver that you've installed with your kernel mode driver. And via symbolic links and overloading the path, you can actually have multiple versions of a CTK user mode driver on a system with one kernel mode driver. The considerations here are similar to minor version compatibility. You can't call APIs from a future CTK that don't exist or won't be understood by an older driver. Likewise, you can't utilize features of an underlying hardware that might not exist in that underlying hardware. However, with forward compatibility, since the KMD remains the same, you can actually leverage PTX JIT compiling without bringing in a static library. Here we have the life cycle of the forward compatibility packages. First, please note that this feature is only available on production and LTS drivers, not the new feature branches. And as said before, the compatibility packages will only be provided for a given KMD for the life cycle of that driver. The forward compatibility packages are actually not required for older CTKs trying to call into newer drivers. That would be covered by backwards compatibility of the binaries. Or, if you're not using binaries, minor version compatibility for your source code. Sometimes, especially with LTS drivers, you may download a new CTK that comes with a newer driver set. You do not need any special packages. The forward compatibility packages are really meant for different major versions of the CTK. So to summarize the capabilities that we have, here they are side by side. Minor version compatibility will let you mix and match a driver set with any CTK within a major version of CUDA. Forward compatibility will specifically let you use an older KMD with a newer CTK and its associated UMD. Now, what are the use cases for some of these? Primary use cases for minor version compatibility are for Docker images running on a host with a potentially unknown, to so the container, uh, underlying driver set versus forward compatibility, a potentially large infrastructure where upgrading to newer drivers isn't really practical or feasible. If you're asking yourself, which compatibility should I use? I've outlined some of the higher level differences here, and there are trade-offs to each. Minor version compatibility can only be used within a major release of CUDA, while forward compatibility can be used across major versions. However, Minor version supports all NVIDIA products across Windows and Linux, while forward compatibility is only supported on our data center ready cards on Linux. Forward compatibility will support PTX JIT compiling, but you might need your data center infrastructure team to help you install new SO files. For more information, see the link below. So I hope that this has been a helpful introduction to the compatibility story at NVIDIA. We're constantly striving to better enable our developers to provide flexibility on how you choose to code, compile, and deploy your application. For more information on the specifics of compatibility, please visit nvidia.com. Thanks for watching and happy coding. <laughs>